Hello, movie lovers. I'm Brad Barton from Fandango. As you see, the storm clouds are beginning to roll in here in London, England, which can mean only one thing. The God of Thunder is near. Let's talk to the cast, the director, and the producer of the new film Thor, The Dark World. <laughs> Not worthy. Some believe that before the universe, there was nothing. They're wrong. There was darkness, and it has survived. What's gonna happen? One of the things we wanted to do on this film was to build out Asgard even more, was to explore other parts of Asgard, and to make the worlds that we visit feel, although of course they're different planets, they're very fantastical, a lot of effects work involved, but to give them a basis of reality. And the work that Alan has done on television, and in particular Game of Thrones, really lent itself to that kind of location shooting and inspired us to do much more location filming than we'd done in the past. I could never have done this without um, Game of Thrones as a warm-up. You also directed many episodes of Sex and the City, which certainly <laughs> must have been an important influence on Thor that I Well, it's world. funny. I think you know we could make jokes about that, but actually, when you bring it up, um, you know, one of the key things in a, in a Marvel movie, and I, I was trying desperately to do it in this one, you have to have epic scale, you have to have seat of the pants action, but you have to make people laugh, too. This character has a really satisfying evolution, and finding new shades to him, I yeah. have got to imagine as got to be a great inviting reason to keep coming back to him. You know, not to repeat what we'd already done, you know, was the goal, and, and have a more mature guy, because that was the transition of sort of where he's headed, and, and uh, but also keep some of that temperament in there and, and make sure the naivety of the, you know, the character and that played into some great humor was still available to us. You play, of course, Malekith. He's a dark elf who has a score to settle with Asgard. The character was introduced in the comics in the 80s, of course. Were you at all familiar with this character beforehand? Well, I was aware of the Marvel comics. I yeah. was born in 64, so they're around in Britain and were quite exotic. That kind of Americana mm. was quite exotic. The creation of Malekith, I looked at Norse mythology, which is where he originates, where he and the dark elves originate, and I looked at the Marvel mythology. Well, basically, it was created from the script that was written and uh, my collaboration with Alan. And that, that's talking about the psychology of him. Darcy sees some action in this film in more ways than one. What? Yes. What? Um, was it fun joining the battle sequences and getting plopped down in the middle of all this special effects madness? It was. There is one thing that I you don't really see, mm -hmm. which is I dive behind a car. Like, dive onto the ground, me, did it so many times, hit the ground, got up oh, like that, and you don't see it happen. Oh. I was so excited too. I told my mom, I was like, I fell down a lot, I totally like scratched my eye a little bit. Really you hear nice. that, America? You hear that? I you did. You hear that, world? I fell down. Uh, she fell down <laughs> and maybe scratched her eye. Since you get to go to Asgard in this film, that means that you also get some pretty sweet Asgardian costumes yes. as well. Did you have any favorites that they created for you? They were all so beautiful. That's so incredible to see. Even like the fabrics are printed specifically for the, the film. I loved also they had like a, an armor making shop in the in the actual costume department and the artisans actually making the jewelry and everything by hand. So it was so amazing to get to watch because everything's actually made for the film instead of you know just buying a couple t-shirts or right. something. With three major appearances under his cinematic belt, mm. Loki is easily one of the most popular characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm. at this point, which begs the question, when is he getting his own movie? It's up to Kevin Feige who runs Marvel Studios. Of course there are many iterations of the character, many situations I'd love to see him in. You know, I'd love to see him um, somewhere like on his own, on Earth, in the 70s, uh, running a nightclub, you know, <laughs> playing guitar with Jimi Hendrix or something, you know. There is a sort of rock star element to him, but uh, he, it, I must also say, he's, he's defined in opposition to Thor, right. so I don't quite know how it would be to be Loki in a film without Chris Hemsworth. As long as he's wearing some green velvet suit in the 70s, I'm like, <laughs> All yours. <laughs> Anyone else? 